I'm not really seeing a whole lot of blood though for somebody that was pistol whipped. <gasps> Oh my god, no. Detective Doubt in Airplane 4K! All black. Today's case is about a guy, a young guy, named Ernest Ibarra. I'm gonna show you a quick video of him, just so you guys kinda can see who exactly Ernie was. This is Ernie. He was a young guy, super, super into video games, like a lot of us. This is back in the early 2000, to like early 2010s, and he loved video games, always on his computer. He was a hardcore PC gamer. He could pull apart a computer, put it together, like, I mean, and for like 2012, early 2010s, like this is a really early hobby on this. This guy would have been on Twitch. He would have been on Twitch probably watching a lot of the streamers that we watch. He ended up marrying this woman uh, named Samantha. We'll get to Samantha, but a few more details about Ernie. Uh, he worked two jobs to support his family. I think he kind of had a trade by day, and then at night I read that he worked at like Little Caesars or something. Meanwhile, Samantha was unemployed and didn't have a job. According to Samantha's YouTube channel, she claims that she was a piercer at her dad's shop or something, but there's absolutely nothing to corroborate that because I also saw another video on Samantha's YouTube page where she said that she was currently working on a film with Gerard Butler and another film starring Rooney Mara. In order to get into a movie with Gerard Butler and Rooney Mara, you probably would have to be a pretty talented person. Now, I'm not gonna comment on her talent right away. I'm just gonna kind of show you her caliber of YouTube videos. Now, keep in mind, this is 2012. Simply Manic presents, look, look at that wolf graphic, mommy tag. Hey guys, we're doing the mommy tag. This is my mom, Rose. Hi guys. The That's right. Question. This is Samantha Wolford, mother of four that claims she's in the middle of filming with Gerard Butler and Rooney Mara. Let's, uh, let's just go ahead and see this sheer talent. What was I like as a child? Not much different than you are now. Spoiled ass <laughs> rotten. Um, but you did like to read. You like to be read to. And you were a very happy, smiley child. So being spoiled was just one of the perks of being there. <laughs> okay. What do you think of me making YouTube videos? Well, I guess I don't mind. It takes up a lot of time. She really tries to put a lot into this, guys. Um, there's always something going on. You always have to be on the watch because you never know what you do or what you say if it's going to end up on YouTube. Okay. Her, resp her mom's response to this is very, very serious because this was back in 2012. Logan Paul vlogs were not a thing. People weren't used to this shit. And Samantha was running around so desperate to be a YouTuber, she was filming everything. She was filming her children. She was filming Ernie when he didn't want to be filmed. She was filming the family vacations. Samantha was so obsessed with becoming a famous YouTuber that she pretty much neglected her kids. While Eddie was going off to work in the daytime and then working at night. How, 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 like, how many of you guys have ever worked a double shift like that? It is fucking awful. It is so f***ing awful. And then it's like somewhere after, you know, the two or three month mark, and then especially after the one year mark, you just kind of accept that this is your life and you're going to work 14 hours a day. Oh my God, it is such a miserable existence. So here's, or I'm sorry, I said Eddie earlier. Here's Ernie out here busting his ass for children that aren't, two of the kids are his, two of the kids are not his, they were hers from another marriage. And she's just sitting at home making mommy tag videos. The house is a disaster. She doesn't wanna work. She's making all of these excuses. And he kinda just keeps saying like, okay, all right, I guess, okay. This was an interesting video that we found yeah. where she claims that her house burned down. No other details. No other documents about that at all. Maybe her house really did burn down. But let's just look at her demeanor. Hey guys, I was just letting you know that I still love you and I haven't forgot about you. I've just had a lot of stuff going on in my personal life. My house burned down and I've been dealing with trying to get like all of that stuff taken care of and get it together. Uh, get the stuff out of there. That type of stuff. Um, 
Uh, so, yeah. Basically, the only thing I have left is <clears throat> a tub full of stuff. And it's like one of those little storage bins. And I'll show you that in here in a minute. But, um... You have four children and all you have is one storage bin of things? That's all that left. And most of that is, like, DVDs and a couple of notebooks that was in the bottom of a bookshelf. As far as, like, clothes and stuff goes, um, I had a few bags in the back of my, my car that, uh, I had gotten together for my kids when we went out of town on a weekend. And so that's really all they have left. They have a few things at my mother's house, but as far as like most of their stuff is gone. They had tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff. In my kids' room alone, they had three toddler beds and like, ugh, I don't even want to try to count how many, um, like toys and things they had. So what's weird to me is that even in like 2012 YouTube, and I don't know if it's because reality TV was really big or there was that vlogger Lonely Girl 15. I don't know what year that came out with, but I just can't understand why Samantha thought that she was f interesting enough that people would want to watch this. Like th this is a murder case at this point, and I don't even want to watch your YouTube videos just to find out what happened. Like normally, you know, you guys, I'm all over this. Shit. Her videos are so f boring it, it's like the most war like it's the most boring thing that I've ever f seen what ends up happening is she's always filming this sh and everyone in the family is pretty over it okay there's one video where she starts talking about uh her pregnancy so she had two twins in a previous relationship and then she starts dating Ernie they have a pretty tumultuous relationship and then at one point she gets pregnant again there's another video as much as I want to show it it's, it, she's just so boring where she shows the pregnancy test and then she straight up says to camera we don't really want to have this baby right now it's just an inopportune time and you know I like I hope it's not twins plot twist it was twins this woman actually did have two twins back to back but let me show you how great of a mother she was call out the lies in this video we'll just give this one a good little two minutes Hey guys, I know it's like <clears throat> totally, oh, that's dark, totally slacked off on my uh, pregnancy vlog. Yeah, I'm still smoking. I know that's horrible, but I don't smoke often. I've got a, uh, well, wherever it's at. I have one of those e-cig things that I smoke on most of the time. It's a real treat when I actually get a regular cigarette. I'm trying. But my doctor agrees that I've got too many uh, stresses in my life. Oh my to God. Listen to this L Listen cigarette. to this But my doctor agrees that I've got too many uh, stresses in my life to completely quit cold turkey. The fact that I've cut back to maybe three, four cigarettes a day is good but he doesn't want me to completely quit because as much stress as I have I may end up sending myself into labor and having absolutely no vices. I don't play video games very often. I don't go out. I don't. Oh look at that. She said I don't have any vices. I, and the first thing she lists is I don't really play video games anymore. That's probably a direct jab at Ernie because he liked to play video games and she's bitter about it. Meanwhile she's out here in this fantasy world where she actually thinks that we People, individuals with brains that function and work and have been growing inside of our heads for many, many years that we're going to believe that a doctor actually sat down and was like, Samantha, I know you're five months pregnant and we never recommend that pregnant women smoke. In fact, we made a law to put it on the fucking cigarette packs. But for you, you have too many stressors in your life. So I think it's okay for you to just have a little treat and have a couple cigarettes a day. Because you don't have many vices, Samantha. So go ahead, smoke away. But don't smoke on the ninth month, okay? Just the first month through the eighth month. Like, what f***ing world? I've had a lot going on. I totaled my car on Monday. And <clears throat> had to get checked out over that. Um, other than, if you can tell... I have a cut right here. Yeah, you can't really tell. Yeah, when it's bright enough, you can see the red. But I have a cut right there Where? on my face. And I had Where? some bruises up into my legs. And on my arms, I had a hog run out and hit me. That sucked. 
right now the woods so you guys you guys can see the kind of a pattern she has is telling these insane stories for her youtube channel my house burned down i crashed my car i was hit i got run over by a hog and i mean they're littered all over her channel so what is the ultimate lie for youtube fame well something happened to my husband and i'm the victim in 2012 the top youtube channels were like smosh machinima jenna marbles uh college humor pewdiepie dude what was she watching that made her think that anyone would want to see any of this dude Why is she filming her daughter while going goddamn 45 miles per hour in some, in some kind of residential street? Well, it's not residential. Is it residential? Those look like, that, those are people's houses to me. So after this, Ernie is just like done. It's too much. He's been asking her not to post the children online. She's obviously endangering them. And then on top of that, isn't respecting his wishes. So he ends up moving out. They have a lot of back and forth and she ends up pulling him back in. One thing that was a huge issue in their relationship when they got back together was that Ernie was a huge gamer. And one of the websites he used, I don't know what it was. It could have been MapleStory. It could have been Gaia Online. But he ended up having an avatar, a character, that got married to another woman in a game. And Samantha f***ing flipped. So at this point, just their entire relationship has escalated. It's escalated over the, like, little things. I mean, little things that turn into pretty big things. There's one day where Ernie came home from work and he decided, you know, he's done with this shit. The house is messy. He's working these 14 hour days. You can't even take care of the kids because the kids are not being taken care of and you can't even take care of the house. Your YouTube channel's not doing well. She didn't even have 100 subscribers. Nobody was watching this shit. Nobody. Yet she was filming everybody like not respecting people's wishes to not be on camera. The mother was even saying that sometimes she would kind of sneak record stuff and then it would just end up on YouTube. Everyone felt so violated by her obsession with YouTube. And so when Ernie finally confronted her about the house being messy and saying that he was done and he needed help too. Samantha's solution to this is to start telling everyone, friends and family, that Ernie is abusing her. She tells them that Ernie's been hitting her. She tries to show them bruises and abrasions on her. But these people have known Ernie for a long time and he's not a violent guy. Nobody is buying this shit. And they also know that you know, Samantha has a tendency towards theatrics. I'm not sure if she just did this to get sympathy or she thought that if people believed it, that maybe she could get out of the relationship. But also, let's be honest, he's taking care of things. He's working these long hours and she's got four kids at home and no job. Who the f is going to take care of you, Samantha? OK, there was one person who was, I guess, uh, bending over a little bit backwards for her. Her, his name was Jonathan Sanford. Jonathan Sanford, I'm not sure if they had any type of like sexual relationship or serious relationship, but Jonathan must have taken somewhat of a liking to her because they caught him on CCTV footage taking her kids to Walmart. Jonathan was out here taking care of her kids. For what? Gentlemen, are you taking care of somebody's kids if you don't like her? Maybe, maybe, but they had barely known each other. So Samantha starts concocting this plan. And it all starts with her telling Jonathan Sanford that she's being abused. And I just have to assume that because he's been taking care of her kids, he probably cares about her. Let's fast forward to the night that something happens. On February 20th, 2015, Samantha makes a phone call to her mom. And in a very Jennifer Pan style, she says, oh my God, Three men just broke into the apartment. I'm tied upstairs. They kidnapped Ernie. This strikes me as very odd because normally violent criminals don't come in and abduct and kidnap a man unless he's high profile and they're planning to use him for ransom or he's a target. Okay? 
it just doesn't make sense why if you're trying to set up a random home invasion it doesn't make sense that the three dudes come in and they're like hey we came in to steal all of your shit, but we're not gonna take anything actually you know what let's take your husband doesn't make any sense okay we're just all living in samantha's fantasy world but this is what she tells her mother that these three men bursted in she didn't know who they were and they took ernie and she's upstairs and she's bound they get there and one of the other things the mom notices that's really weird is the children are fast asleep and for some reason they're all in the same bedroom now if three violent criminals had just come in and attacked him beat him up and kidnapped him wouldn't we wake up the kids when we protect the kids when we you know come on but the mom notices that and maybe she chalks it up to oh she, maybe she didn't know what to do and didn't want to tell the I don't know I have no idea okay I have a home invasion my niece is tied oh, okay. up also this is somebody else making the 911 call for her oh oh and to top this off when she was asked how did she make the, the call when she was tied up because you guys remember that was a big part of the Jennifer Pan case she claims that she dialed her with her nose. She's tied up. She is tied up and dead. It's February 20th, 2015 in Titus County, Texas. Ginger Kesterson is on the phone with police, explaining that someone broke into the home of her niece. I am untying her. I can't get the door. What is the victim's name? Uh, Samantha Wolford. Oh, okay. look at that. Vi look at that victim posture i'm i'm sorry okay listen i've been in a lot I've, I've gone through a range of emotions in my life okay this this position that she's trying to take up it, it's like forced concern oh my god this looks so stupid like she actually looks like a stupid penguin in this do you see like her posture according to wolford she managed to break Ugh, free I, I, from her restraints and call her mom who then contacted Kesterson to come to the house. During the attack, her five children were all asleep. However, as for her husband, her five children were asleep. The father of three of those kids, Ernest Ernie Ibera Jr., he's nowhere in sight. He's saying that they hit her husband in the face about five times and drug him out. Police quickly arrive on the scene. So walk me through what this happened. I don't honestly know what happened. Okay. I was in bed asleep, okay. and we heard a noise, and the second I was able to open my eyes, somebody grabbed me and jerked me out of the bed and slammed me down on the ground and started tying me up. Didn't recognize anything about... Let's read her statement one more time. <laughs> I was in bed asleep. And we heard a noise. Okay, so she's saying she and Ernie heard something and they both kind of woke up. And the second I was able to open my eyes, somebody grabbed me and jerked me out of the bed and slammed me down on the ground and started tying me up. This just, this, whenever something sounds like something the convicted killer probably saw in a movie, it, this is just their fantasy world. Like, this is not f***ing real, man. Slammed me down on the ground and started tying me up. Didn't recognize anything about. They had Tabby black Hannah mouse Soundy. Line, black shirts, black pants. Every inch of skin was covered. Home invasions are rare among average people. Yeah, home invasions are rare. And then the other thing is, I know I talk about organized versus disorganized crimes all, all the time. But once again, this is a disorganized crime, especially because it's it's a random home invasion. They didn't really steal anything. And on top of that, the the objects they used to tie her up, the dress and the ribbon came from her own home, which means that the people that perpetrated the crime did not come prepared. Therefore, it's a disorganized crime. Now with that, with a disorganized crime that is not planned, you're going to tell me that all three of these men showed up in black shirts, black pants, and black masks. Nothing else was planned except their outfits. Get the f out of here, Samantha. Because of the fact that there's so much risk involved, right? Because when you come into a home invasion, you're coming in with force, with weapons, you're holding people at gunpoint. The situation can be a little bit more out of control. There. It was a very harrowing tale and very dramatic. Then when they dragged me downstairs, because they had him downstairs and they were separating us, I went downstairs and his face was covered in blood. 
Do you know what they were hitting him with? A gun! <laughs> At one point, Samantha says they bring her downstairs and have uh, her stand in front of him while they say, how can you not appreciate what you have here? You have this beautiful woman here. How can you not appreciate this? How could he treat her so badly? Uh, this also reminds me of Tracy Richter where they're like, yeah, they like this fantasy world of th th this woman is so coveted and special, but we're dealing with violent criminals, yet violent criminals still respect a what Your kid, your kid, this is just a f Oh, but I they hate exposed this her case and they so used much. her to taunt him while they continued to beat him. Look at this nice boy! Why would boy. someone attack this couple? And where exactly is Ernie? Let's take a step back. Coming up, Samantha sits down with authorities and she realizes who may be behind this attack. I feel like there's something he hasn't been telling me, but I don't know what. It's what Wolford remembers, though, about the comments from the assailants that provides a new clue. Dude, this footage Did you hear him say anything else besides was, what you told us? They said that it was because of his dad. And because of his dad? Yeah. Okay. And um, they said his dad knocked on someone and got their man thrown behind bars. And now they were taking revenge and taking someone. Oh, and she got her little motive ready. So she's, she, she's feeding the three men a motive. They said his dad, they're saying Ernie's dad narked on someone and then the person's in jail and now they're taking revenge by taking someone from him. Okay, Samantha, you dumb b She thinks that she's going to make this statement and it's all going to stop there. Exactly what's going to happen is they're going to sit him down, they're going to sit her down and they're going to be like, we need to figure out who the guy is that was in jail for being narked on and then we'll just figure out who the three men are okay so let's get those details like she thinks it's just gonna end here one from him could ernie's father somehow be mixed up in all of this as wolford later tells detectives she thinks he just might be his dad has a problem with getting involved in things that he don't need to be getting involved with such as drugs as law enforcement work to check out this lead they notice that some things are off I'm not really seeing a whole lot of blood, though, for somebody that was pistol whipped. <gasps> oh my god, no. Detective Doubt in 4K! All black. <laughs> black shoes, no identifying marks on them. There's also they the matter of a bullshit. Wolford calling her mom. My mother was the first number on my call list. I just used my face. And So instead of calling 911 for help, you called your mother? How do you press? 911 with your face. How you well, how did you dial your mother with your face? I didn't dial my mother. I just pushed the first thing that was on there. It had just happened to be my mom. I think you know exactly who did this. I think the story's made up about about the uh, well, your daddy, his daddy, and and, and stuff like that. And I uh, think you know. I think you know exactly really who did, did this. And I think you're scared. More videos like this. Samantha sees herself as an actress. But I think that she exaggerates her own abilities and investigators really see right through her. The only other thing. Wait, uh, this is good. I do. Hold on. You know, you know, Sam, you know I'm not here lying to you. You know I know. <laughs> the only other thing I know, I don't even know. I know. Okay. But it's suspicious. Okay. <laughs> I've been up at the hospital with my friend Charlotte. Okay. And she's got a guy there, and I swear to God, I cannot go up there that I said any of this. Oh my God. <laughs> I love how I just can't get over. I just, how f***ing stupid Samantha is. And not only is she dumb, but she thinks the rest of us are stupid too. While in the middle of a murder or kidnapping investigation, when she's in the interrogation room talking to the police, she says, Okay, I'm gonna tell you something, but you can't tell anyone I told you this. You're talking to the police about a murder case! Because they have a lot of friends around here, and my life will be in a lot of danger. Okay. Please, officer, don't tell anyone because I, I can die. talking to my friends about our problem. Mm -hmm. And he gets to talking about how a man should treat a woman that way and how you don't do those things to a person. Okay. It's not my fault. I, Samantha, didn't drive them in any direction. These guys just walked up and they said, Milady? <laughs> He's going to deal with the situation. Okay. I didn't take him to see Milady, I'm going to deal with the situation. And Samantha said, okay, you're not going to do anything bad, right? Milady, I got this. Seriously. This is literally okay. say, Sam, you stories. know who did this. Okay, what, who is this guy? His name's John. John who? 
<laughs> His Facebook is Rebel. Gone Rebel. As time went on, need, need, her story started to change because the reality really is water. when you tell the truth, the truth doesn't change. And when the details start to switch up, that is definitely a cue for law enforcement that there's more happening here and that they need to dive deeper. What did you say when he said he's going to take care of that problem? I just laughed at him. I thought he was joking. So now all of a sudden, why are you bringing him out? Because you know that it was him. Because why do you know I, it was him? I just have feeling like it was. Yo, that analysis by that lady was so spot on. She said that Samantha thinks she's an actress, but <laughs> doesn't really, she doesn't know how bad her acting is. Up next, we find out who this John Rebel is and also what happened to Ernie. They never told me why. They just told me that they're going to fuck this dude up. Where's all this footage, dude? Oh my God. Seen. It's just not matching. I don't think you, I don't think you harmed this boy, but I think you know who did. It's February yeah, 2015. Yeah, she thinks she's doing so good. young mother and YouTuber Samantha Wolford admits to Texas police she may know who's behind the abduction of her husband, Ernie Ibera. She explains that one day she had complained of her marital problems to her friend's boyfriend, who cryptically oh, said I can find the he was going to deal with the situation. A statement that at the time, Wolford said she didn't take seriously. This man was identified as Jonathan Sanford. Now, Jonathan Sanford had recently been released from prison for molesting his cousin. Starting in junior high, he uh, enjoyed, you know. That was the guy that was taking care of her kids. Shaking kids down for lunch money. Uh, he's just that kind of guy. And he's really unapologetic about anything he did, um, illegal, wrong, immoral. Police quickly arrest Sanford as well as his brother-in-law, Jose Antonio Ponce. Jonathan Sanford and Jose Ponce were arrested the following morning and they were arrested because of information. <laughs> also, yeah, she actually named her co-conspirator. What, what does she think that now at this point, even though he knows all the details and I texted him all this stuff and asked him to kill my husband, I think I can win this. I think I can lie myself out of the, like she really thinks this Samantha I found the uh, Gerard Butler video. Let me grab water, guys. She had previously described that there were three of them, so I think law enforcement believed that there was at least one more person involved. Police also apprehend Octavius Lamar Rhymes, who Sanford enlisted for the attack on Ernie. Octavius Rhymes was from the nearby town of uh, Pittsburgh. He had been in the military. He was using drugs, uh, methamphetamine specifically. He wasn't doing anything uh, productive, and that's kind of what put him in this situation. Pretty quickly, after the Sheriff's Department detained and arrested uh, Jose Ponce and Jonathan Sanford, uh, those two individuals talked. Sanford decides to open up to police and explains how and why they attacked Ernie. Samantha talking about her relationship with me and Jay and my sister-in-law and all that and me trying to talk to her and help her out and all that because she seems like a good person to me and she was explaining to me how he treats the kids and all that and he believed it if I ever see it or if I happen to be around or if I ever see her with bruises or the kids with bruises that so yeah I said I'd whoop his ass I did say I'd, I'd hospitalize him I'm going to put you down and make sure you can't come back up and my ass as I'm walking away. Oh my god, this is an incredible It's almost like his attitude footage. was... Ernie Ibera is found dead and the killers are apprehended. You might think the case is closed. Not quite. We're going to be, you know, checking your phone records for the last few months. Oh my god. Anybody that's involved in this and not connected to your phone? No. Okay. You're sure about that? Yeah. Look like Authorities note that the scene of the home invasion is suspicious, with no items taken, the kids being asleep the entire time, and the fact that immediately after undoing her binds, Samantha called her mom first, not 911. I think that Samantha wanted extra eyes. I think she wanted people to be to able to her. corroborate her story. See her as the victim. Up to that moment, it, it could have happened like she said. The officers arriving on the scene did not have any thorough understanding of 
how fragile the ribbons that she was tied up with were. And it didn't have the information regarding how she got her phone and how she was making phone calls. Where did he take that? Well, we've got a search warrant for your phone. That phone's gonna be ours for a while. Things are just not piecing together with your story. Her realizing she's not a good actress. That would reveal so much. Let's go back to the body cam footage from the night of the home invasion. They took his phone to... So he's got his phone? No, they have his okay, phone. They're they going to track that phone. Hey, all right, this is what we need to do. I need to do an emergency uh, phone. phone ping. And I've because, got the cell Because they can find out last location, or at least the way they do it is like how... They check the three phone towers that are nearby to the phone's triangulation. So they can kind of pinpoint it based off of the three that are closest to it and find the last location where the phone was turned on. And who knows if they even turned his phone on or off. Phone number. Chris Durant calls uh, dispatch. And when he's doing that, she does ask if she can call or text her mother. Can I call my mother? Yeah. Verizon gave us text messages from Octavius Rhymes' phone. That showed some back part. and forth between Samantha's phone and Octavius' Listen phone. Listen to this part, guys. We had messages from her to the co-defendants to try to help them evade law enforcement. So the first one was at 2.30 a.m. Comparing uh, the time stamp on Durant's body-worn camera and her asking if she can call her mom or message her mom. At that moment, she sent Octavius Rhyme a text that said to the general effect, Kill Day's phone, shut that down. Um, Day is a nickname that uh, Ernie Ibera went by. So just to summarize that, at 2.30 in the morning, when officers were there and investigating the case, she asked if she could call her mother, and then she texted one of the co-conspirators and said, kill the phone. So this woman that's acting like victim, like she didn't do anything, she's not controlling anything, like all three of these guys are just like, milady, do you want us to do the job? Do you want us to take care of it? But that's the way she's talking. Kill it. Kill Day's phone. Get rid of it. Period. Like I saw the, t the written out text of these messages. It's very cold and it's very much like she's in charge. They're, they're trying to right now, so. It's so far nothing. Uh, they haven't heard back yet. Look at these adorable dogs. Then there was a second message. So she cute. hears through the radio so something cute. about an address in Pittsburgh. Oh, so cute! Point eight six miles from a resident in Pittsburgh. Know anybody in Pittsburgh? As he turns around, she's picking up her phone. At that moment, she sent another text to Octavius Rhymes that another? said, oh, yeah. "Ditch phone, move." And the phone records then showed a 30 second call between her and Octavius Rhymes just immediately after that. Text messages very clearly showed that she was the So master. she actually tried to delete the text messages. She physically deleted those text messages from her phone. But of course, they don't want to look at your phone. They're going to pull the records from Verizon and find out every single thing that you did was an equal partner in all of this, not the innocent victim that she claimed to be. Yep. She may have been frustrated with her life. You know, obviously, 24-year-old mother, five children, money is a con was a constant struggle. You know, her husband was working several part-time jobs. I've had a lot of people stop me and ask about how I deal with things. Honestly, it's hard. Samantha had this warped way of thinking, this warped mental state that this was going to be the way that she got out of her relationship with Ernie. The thing is, if her plan was successful and she didn't get caught, then certainly she would be the YouTube star that she's always wanted to be. This would get um, her a lot of attention and she could play victim. Oh yeah, well, with and the situation. I think that's what she wanted. I've just, I've been working a lot. Um, I've been doing some extra work on some movies uh, and that's been really, really fun. I've been, I did a Gerard Butler movie here recently, and uh, so that's really cool. There's another one that has Rooney, uh, I can't remember her, Rooney Mara. Yeah, she was the star of the other one I was in here recently, and that's been a blast. Everything's been so much fun working on that. Um, All right, back to this. Stanford and Ponce pleaded guilty to abducting and murdering Ernie Ibera and each were sentenced to 50 years in prison. 
Rhymes went to trial in two different counties, but was convicted in both cases, ultimately receiving a combined prison sentence of 98 years. As for Wolford, she also had two trials. Give her. We tried the kidnapping first. Stack it what up. What she was trying to do is distance herself from the uh, text messages. The position she took, the testimony that she gave, was that uh, she had been in for sleep problems and that she had taken an Ambien and she really didn't remember anything. Five that life happened, sentences for ruining um, each of her kids' lives. didn't any text messages. The jury uh, just didn't believe it and uh, they convicted. Uh, her of the aggravated kidnapping and sentenced her to um, 50 years. A few months later, we tried her on the murder case in Camp County, uh, and that jury uh, gave her 99 years. When she the got the sees, highest sentence. Uh, you know, the still shots from the body cam with, the same, with her on her phone at the very same time that the phone records show her sending text messages to the people who, you know, who killed her husband. That's some solid evidence that, that a jury uh, yep. appreciates. While Wolford appealed her cases, oh her attempts God. were unsuccessful. Dude, even even her face here, it just is like, oh no, oh no, this wasn't supposed to happen. You know, this you're supposed and to. And it be seems Samantha is not done asking for attention, okay? Because she's on a special website that I'd never heard of before, and I doubt many of you guys have heard of as well. And it's called Jail Babes. Here's Samantha's profile. There's never a dull moment with me. I'm a caffeine-addicted Mormon who loves to laugh and enjoy life to the fullest. I love to meet new people. It's always quite interesting getting to know people from all walks of life, so it never... <laughs> this is it. I work hard so I can play harder. Write me so we can play together. You won't be disappointed. She's on this website where... She just wants, I mean, listen, the, the way that you do it is by sending money through JPay. So she wants money. I don't even know if she wants the pen pal. I think she just wants the money. Wait, can you receive email? Yes. If yes, which service? JPay. So she only, I think she only accepts messages that include pay. Can you respond to email? No. Well, maybe. Please, oh, please provide your mailing address so I can respond. Occupation before prison. Business manager. I'm surprised it didn't say actress um okay F samantha wolfer dude F her i mean the uh, the motive uh, the motive is more like a theory at this point but i don't know how you guys feel but to me this wasn't like a mormon thing where it's like oh i can't get a divorce that's against my religion i think that this was going to become a series of youtube videos and holy sh are Samantha's videos fucking bad. So even with some crazy situation that she creates, I'm...